Hey everybody, it's Kenny McIntosh here from Inside the Ropes and I know you're expecting to see the John Moxley interview here straight away but the, big, the reason I'm here first is because we started recording it, we're still kind of learning as we go with Zoom and stuff and uh, we missed the first half of the first question due to technical difficulties so we're going to join the interview in progress just imagine you're watching Saturday Night's main event and they join a match in progress um, I've just asked John Moxley about taking on the movie Cage Fighter, uh, Worlds Collide how he came he came about uh, accepting the offer to do it and uh, we're going to pick it up as he talks about him doing it the stuff he can bring to it we go on to talk about pro wrestling mma the hager match his injuries and uh, much much more so i hope you enjoy it Thank you, sir. Part of it, that was really cool with, uh, and uh christian is working as exec uh, working as an executive producer is responsible for the kind of part of the responsible for this is that he kind of even told him before I sign off for the movie, like, yeah, for the script, for these parts where the guy, the guy that I'm playing uh, is a, a pro wrestler. And, you know, there's parts where I'm doing like pro wrestling interviews or where I'm doing uh, trash talking for a fight or whatever and stuff like that. He was like, you know, you should probably just let him ad lib a lot of that stuff on his own. Because, you know, that's what he does for a living. He's probably can just do it you know uh so the script for me like a lot of the movie most of the movie i'm not really reading a script i'm just like ad-libbing trash talking and so forth and like the whole the whole press conference scene was like one of the funnest things i've ever done that uh i haven't seen the movie yet but i hope it comes out good i don't know what was left on the chopping block floor and what wasn't uh but uh it was basically just at this big, big fake press conference, and I, I was just talking trash nonstop for an hour, just saying any <laughs> ridiculous thing that would come to my brain, just swearing and calling this man names, and just it was so much fun to just like uh, lay yourself loose and just just lay yourself go like that. So hopefully it uh, hopefully it comes across good on uh, in the movie. You know, it was pretty. Uh, the whole thing was like, uh, so we were in, we filmed in uh, Regina and Saskatchewan in the winter. So freezing cold, like negative a million degrees cold up in Canada. And we filmed in this big sound stage, uh, big empty sound stage. And uh, um. I was going back and forth between uh, that and doing AEW TVs. And we're having, you know, as you are in movies, they're like 10, 12 hour days. And uh, me and uh, Alex, the, it's early in the morning here. I'm sorry, my brain's not turned on yet. <laughs> you know, please in the movie, yeah. Who's the, uh, my protagonist in the movie. We basically, he was originally the guy who, was a coordinator for all the fights in the movies and uh, helped put together a lot of the fights and uh, ended up stepping in the role of Reese. And uh, so me and him were basically our own stunt guys. Like we didn't have any stunt guys to do any of the harder stuff or there was no special effects or nothing like that. We basically did everything in the fight ourselves multiple times. Mm -hmm. So that was a very physical job. Uh, getting the whole uh all the fights filmed over however many days that was and uh yeah that was tough like at first it's like you know you're, you're trying to stay warmed up and in between takes because you know how movies are it's not like it's not like wrestling where you just go out there and do it once you know you do it once and then stop and then we got to reset everything and it might be 10 minutes 20 minutes 40 minutes before we do the next shot and you're doing this physical stuff, you want to stay warmed up so you don't get hurt and you keep your adrenaline going. And it's hard to, to stay up like that for these physical scenes for 12 hours, especially when it's like it's freezing cold and the adrenaline is now dipped. And it's so it's like it was a it was a big uh, physical challenge for both of us. And uh, it's funny, too, because like on a movie, they start putting fake blood on you and stuff in between takes which is sticky and then they start spraying you with water, which in a giant cold uh, warehouse thing we're in is like really annoying. 
because it's so cold when it's already cold and you're shirtless and barefoot and then they come up and spray you with cold water in between takes i almost <laughs> slapped the makeup girl multiple times i can't be on kept uh going like you uh, I was like, can't you put that in the microwave or something? She's like, I'm sorry, it's warm. I'm like, okay, hit me with it, babe. Let's go. Hit me. Ah! Oh, yeah. I like it. It's terrible. She <laughs> just kept going, I'm so sorry. I'm like, it's okay, hit me. Uh, I mean, quite trying to bring some humor to it. But, uh, and, and, you know, so you're sticky, cold, and covered in fake blood. So you're like a giant freezing cold Jolly Rancher for like 12 hours. That's the reality of making fights things like this so i hope that it comes across uh, really good because we really put in a lot of effort to make these uh make these fights cool and uh alex actually toward the end before we even got to finish of the finale of this thing alex tore his groin and then and as i said we didn't have any stunt guys or anything uh i don't remember what it was on but he tore his groin and couldn't walk so the next day we had a bunch of stuff left to film and he basically was on one leg. So we had to alter a lot of the action and so forth. And there was times I had to like pick him up and carry him literally. Cause he, we had to change it to where like, cause he couldn't walk. Yeah. So we had to shoot things tighter and so forth. And uh, he's all healed up, ready to go now. And uh, he was scheduled for an, uh, an actual fight. Uh, coming up would have been soon before uh, the world went crazy but uh he's doing good now but he deserves a lot of credit for uh getting through the final day of that filming with one leg literally uh was, with his uh, groin popped off and uh it was a collaborative effort between me and him and uh just the director to try to like figure out how to do this big finish and get the shot we want when he's on one leg you know we don't have any backups or stunt guys or special effects we just got to figure out uh how to make this cool so you know i I have faith in uh the team that they did that we all did and obviously you know with cage fighter being the first thing you've done since leaving wb and you've yeah jay jay christian's in it as well but chuck liddell's also in it ufc legend what was it like getting to work with chuck liddell in the movie oh super cool i mean we i don't we weren't in like a lot of scenes together or anything like that but uh when you're sitting around bored in between takes on a set you know what i mean and uh it's really cool to have you know what makes it fun sometimes is having cool people to kind of shoot the shoot the stuff with and like chuck liddell is the coolest human alive like i mean obviously i'm such a huge fan and uh of like you know the that era of ufc guys and stuff those are guys I watched when I was growing up. So I'm like geeking out. I'm like, you're freaking Chuck Liddell, you know? And I'm not going to, it's like, you don't want to go up to a guy like that and ask him like, you know, Hey, let's talk about fighting, but like <laughs> wrestling and fighting and stuff like that is basically all I want to talk about all day, but it's cool. Cause he just brings it up. Like he just wants, he just starts going on in conversations about fighting without you prodding him on. So, I, or I'll see him do it to somebody else and I'll come over and then I'll be like, so I'll get in on it. And, uh, it was really cool, and he's just a really, uh, really down to earth, chill guy. When it, when he's a guy like that, when he's, he's the coolest dudes in the world who are the most chill are the men who can kill you with their bare hands the easiest. So that's why he's just a really nice, chill guy to have a have a beer with, you know. So that was really cool. And didn't uh, you didn't you you ended up training with Chuck Liddell like in the lead up to your your wrestling match with Jericho, right? But you ended up doing some training with Chuck as well. Uh, that was Randy Couture in right, Vegas. Sure. That was one of Chuck's rivals, strangely. So I don't know how I've gotten into this weird vortex of 90s MMA legends. <laughs> Strange. Um, and what, like, in terms of MMA, with, with you play Randy Stone in the movie who's coming into the world of MMA from wrestling. So you mentioned there about you watching Chuck Liddell when you were younger in UFC. Have you always been a big fan of MMA? Has it always been a thing that you've enjoyed? Oh, yeah, because their videos are right next to the... Uh, like the old UFC videos are right next to the wrestling videos at the video store, at like Blockbuster Video. So uh-huh. you got to pick those up too. So uh, literally, that's that's where it started. Was you know the UFC videos were next to the uh, wrestling videos at 
Blockbuster. So pick those up and check that out too. Wait, I was thinking. I never went away. I was thinking about your like your career so far and doing this movie with the two worlds combining and. You, in your wrestling career, you got to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, who'd been to wrestling, then MMA, then back. And then recently you faced Jake Hager in wrestling, who'd went to MMA and came back. And I know that you weren't that happy with the Lesnar fight, but you were happy with the Hager fight. What did they bring or not bring from MMA that you think helped the, the build of those fights and sort of bringing it together? Uh, I think with the Hager match, I, I really like the... Uh, I really like the... Uh, um, this is where I'm looking for kind of, I guess the the realism or the just the presentation of like I like my matches to appear to be fights or contests. Yeah. You know, in general, there's many different types of pro wrestling and ways to do wrestling and different things, and they're all fun. But in general, I think, especially as like as a world champion right now. I want all my matches, especially if it's Saturday match, to really feel like a contest. And the cool thing about the Hager match is a lot of it was, like, really a struggle. Like, pro wrestling is a give and take. That's what separates it from an actual fight. So there's always a little bit of give and take. But uh, just that it's hard to describe maybe to somebody who's never been in the ring before, uh, been out on the mat or whatever, but, like, Everything in the Hager match, especially in the first 10 minutes or so, is like a struggle. Like if you're going to get a leg, you're going to have to struggle for it. If you're going to have to – and sometimes you try to get something and you don't get it. you yeah. you got to make the other guy earn the, the arm drag or whatever he's trying to get, you know, and like that. And then you get a – then you get a very I – mean, even though that's just Matt wrestling, you get a very, very lively product. And I, I love – I love watching scrambles on the mat and submissions and stuff like that. So it was very cool to be a, to be able to get, put that on TV, you know, because a lot of times when you start with a pace like that, uh, fans live in the arena get kind of restless. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was a great opportunity to kind of show off, especially Hager's mat skills as a NCAA champion and so forth. So I, I thought it was a pretty uh, cool match. I was pretty happy with it. And um, in you've, you've done a movie before. What would you say you learned the most about you doing this movie, doing Cage Fighter? Was there anything you learned coming out of it that you were surprised at? Um, what did I learn? Um, you, man, I wish I had a good answer for that. There's going to be something, <laughs> but I... Uh, um, well, I mean, in terms of like, yeah, I mean, you always, always learning stuff, you know, like little tiny tricks and so forth. I don't have a good answer for that right now. Sorry. Uh, yeah. It's like, one, it, one thing I was thinking was like, this did have time. The timing of this was a little weird because, uh, I ended up having to have surgery right around where I missed that, that AEW pay-per-view and a couple of matches. Uh, and then that kind of screwed me up. Cause I was like looking to be like in the best shape of my life for this movie. Cause this guy is like a clubber Lang type guy or whatever. So like, this was before the G1 and all this last summer. So I was like, all right, that's the next thing I'm going to get in shape for. But I got like nine months or six months or whatever to get in shape. I'm going to be huge. I'm going to be jacked to the gills. And uh, I, was in, I was in awesome shape. And then I had surgery. And then when you have surgery, you can't train and so forth. So you kind of like body goes to hell. And I wasn't quite as in good a shape for this as I would have hoped. And I didn't even, I thought I was going to have to pull out of it for a minute because I didn't know if when I was getting surgery and stuff, I didn't know what the recovery would be like. And, you know, it actually, mm -hmm. I kind of barely made the window of where I can actually do this movie. And I got back to training as much as possible. So. Hopefully, special effects and stuff can actually make me look decent because, you know, I wasn't in my peak shape, but, you know, oh, well. Um, well you you'd mentioned in a lot of interviews last year, you mentioned how you don't want to have a script anymore when you're doing wrestling. And I wondered about coming into Cage Fighter, Alex, who plays Reese, when I spoke to him, he talked about, you know, you guys working on the fight scenes together. Was that fun to get involved in kind of putting those together and kind of having a say rather than just being handed something going, here is what you're doing verbatim? 
Oh, 100 percent. That's one of the funnest parts about uh, movies is like is the fight choreography. I've, I've, I have the first movie I ever did. I found that that was the funnest part. I almost was like, I'd rather be the stunt guy than the actor because <laughs> the stunt guy gets to do all the cool stuff. And uh, I was thinking back then, I was like, man, why aren't like more pro wrestlers? Because it, it came really easy to me. Like uh, I was across from another actor and it took him like all day to get the fight scene down. And we had a whole rehearsal day to, for this fight scene and it was taking him forever to pick it up. And I got it in 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Duck the punch, hit him in the thing, throw him over the table, kick him in the balls. I got it. Easy. Because that's what I do for a living. So, mm -hmm. like, as opposed to a regular actor. So it took me, like, like that to pick it up. And I was like, man, I'm surprised more pro wrestlers don't get into, like, fight coordinating and stunt stuff like that. I don't know. I guess it's kind of a, uh, you know, it's part of the real world where they have a union and stuff like that. So it might be harder to get into. I don't know. But it's a fun it's a fun thing to do and like yeah, when we were putting this fight together it was a lot of uh suggestions and like oh if you did this i could do this and what would your character do here and uh luckily my character is supposed to be kind of a, a bruising brawler tank abbott ish technique type guy who wouldn't necessarily rely on perfect technique which is good for me because i hide the fact that i often don't have the best technique so it kind of fits the character i, I guess uh, so, so that's pretty cool. And, you know, and just, I learned that, there we go. Finally, I got to answer your question. I did learn some cool stuff, you know, from Alex rolling around the mat and stuff, putting this together just about uh, just different little techniques and stuff to use in wrestling or, uh, you know, striking and stuff like that. So it was, uh, you're always learning something. I, yeah, it was I, really fun. I remember there was a, like a few years ago, there was a comment that Jim Cornette had made about MMA and he'd said that pro wrestling in the mid 2000s maybe didn't have that big fight feel anymore. And a lot of fans maybe went to UFC or MMA to find that. And now we're seeing a lot of crossover with people who are going to MMA for wrestling or the other way around. Um, do you think that's kind of part of why this movie's coming out at a good time? Because whether it's, you know, Ronda and Cain Velasquez going to wrestling or Hager coming back to wrestling, it's a good time to kind of explore the two worlds together. Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely, you know, it. a lot of it is the same. I remember Les, Les Thatcher saying, you know, he's talking to Terry Funk, right when, and like, kind of the MMA kind of explosion happened. I mean, he's like, what does this remind you of, Les? And he says, this, is our, this was our business. This is what we used to do, basically, promote and sell conflict and fights. And somewhere along the line, wrestling got away from that, you know. So it's definitely, there's definitely a uh, uh, a place where, you know, it's basically the same thing. You know, you're trying to sell tickets to an event to see got two guys in the ring. So, you know, there's definitely a lot of crossover there. And, uh, you know, um, movies right now are like, I think everybody's watching a lot of movies in the world right now, you know. I'm watching a lot of. 90 movies and weird stuff and going back to the classics trying out new things you know so i'm glad that this is coming out at a time when the world needs some some entertainment some new movies to come out because you can't go to the movie theater right now so it's cool that we're kind of like treating this like a live sporting event because there is really no live sporting event that's going on right now and they're treating this like a big movie premiere and so forth so hopefully that leads to a lot of people checking it out on on fight tv when it comes out so uh Pretty, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I hope, I really hope people like it because you know we put in a lot of, uh, a lot of good people worked really hard on the movie and you know it should be really fun. And I think the, uh, the main thing of it is what the movie's really about is about you know overcoming challenges and adversity. And you know it's like the, you know the main hero of this movie who uh, Alex plays basically is dealt the worst hand of his life. Something so bad happens that it's unimaginable, something he could have never imagined, like the worst case scenario happens to this guy in his mind. And he has to get all the way back to where he was. And uh, that's where a lot of people are at right now in real life, you know? So it's uh, kind of an apropos theme for, for right now that hopefully somebody can uh, take something away from.
Yeah, hundred percent. Well, it comes at May sixteenth on fight. Uh, Cage Twitter was quite the last thing I want to ask you about. Did obviously need to ask you as well on fight. There's going to be double or nothing later in May as well. How are you guys coping, obviously, with COVID-19 and everything and managing, sort of changing your stories and all that kind of stuff with something that's evolving all the time? I mean, I threw a wrench into the uh, the whole – this terrible situation has thrown a wrench into the, uh, the whole world, and we've had a wrench thrown in our plans and, and so forth, but we are far from – you know, pro wrestling is the one of the least important uh, – things going on in the world right now uh it's an escape and a distraction hopefully for people uh, at best during this tough time but you know with all that's going on out there you know i don't think any of us in the pro wrestling industry are saying uh poor me or kicking ourselves or being down about oh man our storylines got screwed up or whatever because you know the whole world has to pull together right now during this and during this uh thing and you know uh yeah, and uh, my heart just goes out to all the people who are, you know, really, truly affected by this or really, truly uh, risking their lives out on the front lines. And, uh, you know, hopefully a happier times will uh, be sooner rather than later. Yeah, 100%. Well, John, I want to thank you for your time. It's May 16th on Fight. Cage Fight was colliding and Double or Nothing's on the May 23rd. Um, thanks for your time and uh, take care. All right, thank you, man.